Mouse Fix. This is Barry White, baby. Mm. You're listening to Mouse and Weeds. Pull up yourself a chair. Sit down real still like. Grab yourself some hot cocoa. It's time to settle in for some mouse and weeds. Ooh. It feels so good. Like a warm blanket over your face. Cozy, cool, real nice. Get ready for some mouse and weeds. Hi. This is so rare. Look at us. We're back in um in studio. Can we call it yeah. that? Sure. Oh, Weenie. Hi. I remember you from earlier today. (laughs) I know. I saw you out a window. You were in your son's window. Yes, I was. And you shouted at me, and I had just taken off my shirt. Yeah. What were you doing in a jog bra out in the middle of the day? This is a bold move. I'm very proud of you. Well, I figured no one would be looking, and, uh, and I was out breaking down cardboard boxes in the hot, hot heat. Hot, not to be confused heat. with the band from 2003, <laughs> Hot Hot Heat. It, yeah, that, did you ever get into that kind of music? Because I could not do the rockabilly thing. I Wasn't don't that think it's of, rockabilly. I think it was not? like in the vein of Arctic Monkeys and. Really? Really? I don't know. I always I thought they were like really. the, the the trumpet guys when swing was a big deal. Like oh, no. those guys. No? Oh, okay. You might be thinking of. Um, cherry pop and daddies. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, or hot that... snakes. Hot snakes. What? Fact check. Okay. Clearly, we were messing up all these band names. Uh, there is one called Hot Hot Heat. Julianne was right. It is in the vein of Arctic Monkeys. They sing bandages. All right, and then there is also Reverend Horton Heat, who I thought, I did say rockabilly, but I thought there were horns, no horns. Take a listen. And then there's Hot Snakes, who I had never heard of, but Julianne had, and they sound like this. So there you go, Hot Heat, Snakes, and Hot Hot Reverends. We're not talking about anything. Remember <laughs> the idea of staying no. on track? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, this does lead into something I do want to discuss real quick. But Which is what? Well, I invited you to go dancing tonight because I oh, saw yeah. a fun thing. And it reminded me of back in the days when I was single and my friend Lisa and I would go swing dancing. We'd do swing dancing lessons or salsa Ooh. lessons. And then you hang out in the bar and you get to keep dancing with people. And... um like Cafe Sevilla. That's another place that right. does it. Uh-huh. Yeah, totally. And I thought this could be good to get you a little uh, out of the house, a little bit out of school mode and work mode. And Yes. Well, yes. Yes. Well, no. uh, it seems like you might be living vicariously through a single person. Are you? Can we interview no, you about no, that? No, no, no. I want to okay. get, I think it would be fun to get you. Well, okay. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> my husband will never go uh, dancing with me, Aww. ever, ever, ever. Those days are done. It will not happen unless we're like forced at a wedding or a kid dance or a funeral. <laughs> Do I think you dance? guys should take ecstasy. Oh, my God. This is the solution. Drugs? Well, well, they do it for marriage therapy. Here, wait. They Let me say it. that better. I'm going to do this. Wait, hold on. Hold on. What? i got to get my grannies on. Okay. Drugs? You want me to do drugs? All right. Okay, very glasses. good. We're on YouTube. You have too, to look everybody. on YouTube to see this. <laughs> uh, uh. Dumb. Yeah, no, they're they're using ecstasy, MDMA slash Molly guys for the for the hip folks, but Ugh. they're using it for marriage therapy. They say kids one, who are listening to this, it is not okay to do this. I hope kids aren't listening to this, well, but if they are, they're a couple of pervs. But, uh, <laughs> this is old ladies talking about stuff. <laughs> Just kidding, we're not old. We're just in our early 40s. We're just jolly. That's all. Um, yeah. No, I am. But yeah. Um, you know my husband. You've lived here now for how long have you been here? Since I don't know, the new like year. Seven months. It's been a wonderful experience. Yeah. What but, do you think of me observing your marriage and I'm life? Not, yeah, it's fine. But you know how he is. He's not going to change. Like you've well, seen it day most to day. Aren't. 
Yeah. Except for if you use drugs. <laughs> oh my gosh. This no, is I'm not, not the promoting the, the use of drugs. I am saying though that sometimes people can't get out of their rules and conformity that they've decided who they are, but yeah. secretly fill them up with a little fruit juice and boy, will they start shimmying. Or I have an idea. I go with you and okay. other fun people who like dancing because it doesn't mean I'm cheating on anybody if i go dancing or something i can go have fun okay now why are you saying this did something happen where it seemed like contentious when you brought up the idea it was a lot of eyebrows raised like why do you need to go dancing why can't she just go on her own (laughs) so we have a jealousy streak my friends (gasps) but he won't always been the case i don't want to bash dave all right let's move on let's move on anyway the you're I hate when you do this. I was asking you if you want to go dancing because we're talking about you and potentially dating and getting okay, you out of the house. Stop flipping okay. it on me. Well, Girl. you have decided that this is the plan for me, but I I might acquiesce because I have decided that it's time to date in the local area. <laughs> <laughs> Look how excited she got. We talked about this the other day. You lit up more than I lit up about this. How's your tooth, by the way? Would you stop changing the subject? She just had a we'll dental talk implant. About it. Okay. Yeah. So- every time I smile, you're going to notice my dumb tooth. I know. I know. It's there in my face all the time. I think about it day in and she day She has out. a metal rod in there like the guy from James <sighs> Bond. What's his name? Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> he was like the big Russian guy, German. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, so- 70s kids will know. Okay. Jules. Yo. You are willing, acquiescing. I like that word. Yeah. To uh, let me help you get back in the in the field. I did say I think it's time. I think I'm ready as a human being on this earth to open my heart um, and and see what's out there. All right, and- ladies and gentlemen, did you hear that? It's it's recorded <laughs> for posterity. She is uh, available and she's going to make some things happen. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. And this one, when I told her, lit up completely. My okay. sister has been excited about the idea, and I haven't been ready up until this point. So there we well, go. Well, okay, because I think I would be a very good matchmaker. I know you really well. You are my sister. Yes. And I know your type, but oh. I also see what could be tweaked about your type and find a little something else i think oh my gosh okay let's see what is what do you know about me to be true but honest you could be you could tell the flaws too okay i know okay just because past episodes we've talked about this a little bit you guys can go back um what was that one called like feet dirty john that one was fun we talked about dating then that was when you were on a dating app for about (laughs) two seconds and then you got off of it there was one called weens goes a courting yeah yeah (laughs) that was a long time ago that was before your you came out of your cocoon um so i think that you need someone who is an animal lover you need uh a cat uh happy person Mm -hmm. okay no allergies must love cats, just like the movie. Uh, you need someone who supports you. It doesn't have to be vegan or vegetarian, but at least supports you in those efforts and would roll with the flow. Someone who's not uptight. Someone who has a great sense of humor, like quirky, fun, can't be the boring, dumb, jock sense of humor, can't be the dippy dad joke humor. It has to be smart humor. Someone who you can have deep conversations with, talk about philosophy and life, Uh, someone who's strong and strapping, someone who is over six feet tall. I'm sorry, you're six feet tall. I wouldn't normally go there, but it would be nice. Yeah. You don't want to have to Kick, do, so kick someone off your leg like a <laughs> two what are they called? Motorboats in your boobs. All your boys have fit right in your cleavage. And yeah. that's enough of that. Yeah, it's fine. It's time to grow up. Get a okay. big guy. Um, we could look within the range of, I think we, we, I'm your manager now. I am your love manager. Uh, you're going to find someone in there. I would say 50. I think they need to be a little older. I would say within Um, five years. So yeah. Yeah. And 50 and up, not too up because you still want them to get up. (laughs) See what I did there. Uh, and Handsome enough, but doesn't have to be classically, you know, 
Americana football guy can be like our dad. Yeah. Yeah. It can be fun, quirky. Uh, I'm thinking who's the big skater that everybody loves from Encinitas? Tony Hawk? Yeah. Like Tony Hawk looking. You like mm. the sinnoe kind of thinner professory types, perhaps some glasses, Ooh, perhaps some salt and pepper. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. Okay. All right. Um, and what else? Has to be liberal. Loves mm -hmm. helping people, very generous in heart and spirit and mm -hmm. the bedroom. And uh, can't have old ideals and religion has to be super open-minded. Open How'd I do? Now, very good, Joe. Thanks. Congratulations. Thanks. Oh, and good feet. You you hate yucky feet. Yeah, that's true. So. That's very shallow of me, Ooh, though. I can we'll get have past to, that. Can we do... Okay, so if we sign A up beach online... Date? No, can we... We might have to ask, that might be one of your questions on your profile, is like, what, show me a picture of your feet. <laughs> Joel, <laughs> and then people are going to think you have a Creepy. foot fetish. Creepy. Huh? No, I don't want to put that much attention on really? it. Really? It's just, nobody needs to know that, and that's very shallow, and it doesn't really matter. That would be very low on my list. It's not on my list. I made a list. You did? Yes. Okay, what's on your list? Did uh, I hit a lot? You should have been checking them off as I was talking. I could tell you it's a long list and I got berated for the for the fact of okay, here's I'll give you a few. It's oh, I forgot another criteria. one. They need to be athletic, um, like hiking and healthy. Okay. Like just yeah. generally Joe. not smoking, not drinking necessarily. Maybe they could drink, but not like yeah, not excessively crazy. and crazy. Yeah. Okay. But that's very good. I wanna commend yeah. you on your knowing me skills. Thank you for paying attention. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I trust you as my <laughs> – it's not called a mensch, but what is that? Hencha? Oh, yeah. There's a um, nice – Yenta. Jewish – Yentel? Yenta. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh. Okay. Here's number one, folks, okay. for all the guys who are self-absorbed. Okay. This is my <laughs> what, what must a man have or show in order for me to proceed with him? One, okay. he asks me questions and takes a genuine interest in me. How did I forget that? Of course, you always complain <laughs> about the ear humpers that never ask you questions. They just talk at you. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. A genuinely kind heart, empathy, emotional maturity, respect towards humans, animals, and family, unless they were blatantly abusive or awful. Respect for me. Uh, this is a like a 45 list. I, wow. I like patience. it. You did your Ability homework. to understand and respect that people are separate and different from himself. Creative thinking. He has living quarters, a car or transportation, and a oh, job. Oh, yeah. We don't want no <laughs> scrubs. You got to have no a non-scrub. Right. Strong ability to communicate honestly. Respect and appreciation for women and their oppression. Like a male feminist, it would be nice. Yes. Has solid long-term male friends, has self-awareness, wants to leave the world a better place, loves nature and respects nature, and loves being out in nature. Isn't squeamish with insects, animals, or natural things like menstrual cycles, dirt, or farts. <laughs> Genuinely. I was going to say, I hope you added a clause for farts. Good. Okay, good. Did Genuinely, you see? I sent okay. you a link about... Um, it was an article about a guy who, when he met this girl, she walked into the room. He thought she was beautiful. She had some funny, quirky things. And then she started talking about her gas, and he knew she was the one. Oh, So see, that. there are they people blended. out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aww. I'll put that in our show notes. It's cute. Okay. Anyway. But then okay. I read this to someone, and they said, gosh, you know, you got to let up on some of them. Like, maybe, maybe a few you let go like that one. And I was like, I don't know. Anyway, well, so. I mean, there's. Within reason, but actually that'll work itself out in time because you okay. get married. If you get married, you may not get married. Sure. But they'll get more and more comfortable and they'll love you inside and out, menstrual Aww. cycle or not. <laughs> yeah, by the time this happens, maybe it, it will be not. But, um, <laughs> but I'm hoping for the best. Anyway, yeah. is amazing and giving in life and in bed. Watch oh. out. And by that, I mean he... Puts on clean sheets. Okay, a guy who appreciates <laughs> and likes kids, adults, and older adults. Right. Okay. I'll just end there. What know. about, uh, does he watch porn? Is that okay? Ah, uh, within reason, I guess. I think most guys do it. I think even if they right. say they're not, they are. Reasonable porn. Okay, good. I mean, it would be nice 
if they put all their sexual energy into you, but don't you think most guys secretly Oof. do you? No, I'm sure they are out and about. I mean, you see the what stray you looks. Yeah, guys Does have your... to look around. It's the, life is beautiful. There's a lot of beautiful people walking around. Would that make you uh, weird if you walked in and saw your no, honey? No, I guess as long as it wasn't being taken out on someone else, as long as it's in his head and then comes home revved up. I don't know. Yeah, I God, I sound like a librarian. I just can't even. <laughs> Why? <my> glasses again. <laughs> he, I hope he comes home revved up. Like, what <laughs> am I? Anyway. Like the old packer. <laughs> Um, oh, like a, a 1920s car. Got packer. It. Got it. Okay. Uh, packing something. Okay, okay so do you want to hear deal breakers? Not to make this all about me, yeah, yeah, but yeah, since yeah. we're talking about it. Yes. But first, let's hear from our sponsor, Dream Dinners. We are sponsored by Dream Dinners. Dream Dinners is a wonderful food preparation service that is offering our listeners $99 off their first order if you enter Mouse and Weens 99 at checkout. And let me tell you what that includes. This is a month's worth of meals, you guys, that is already chopped up, prepped. It's separated for you. It comes in a bag with instructions and it goes in your freezer so you can take it out and thaw it anytime that it's convenient for you and cook up a quick dinner, 20, 30 minutes. It is such a game changer for us. We cook dinners together as a family we sit down and eat meals as a family and it's healthy food it's great quality food and you can modify it according to your likes and dislikes you can give them special instructions it's perfect for people who don't know how to cook it's so simple i leave instructions out for the kids or my husband sometimes they have looked into it and you save 20 hours a month from shopping and prepping and really the cost of meals is about six fifty per meal, which is so cheap when you think about it. So much cheaper than a lot of the other services. So do go to dreamdinners.com, look up your location. If you're within 25 miles of Poway or San Marcos locations, just enter Mouse Weens 99. You will get $99 off your first full order and you will receive free shipping. Free shipping, free delivery. They don't ship it, they bring it to you. Or you can go pick it up yourself. But it's so easy, you guys. Do it. It is such a life changer. Enjoy. Your deal breakers, not to make this all about me, yeah, yeah, but yeah, since yeah. we're talking about it. Yes. Deal breakers. Immediately. Don't waste time, I said to myself. One, he doesn't ask questions about me or doesn't show interest in getting to know the deeper me. Two, he's unavailable. Wait, 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 wait. Let's talk about this. Men out there. Men out there. Yeah. Um, Please ask the woman, the lady of your life, questions. A, a simple, how was your day? How are you feeling? Did you see anything interesting today? Did you learn something today? And if you're in a first date situation, my God, ask about her family. Ask about where she grew up. All the background stuff. There's some people that just don't blow right into talking about themselves, and that's it. And, ne- and don't ever ask that. I really have had a couple guys that I have sadly... Just said, oh, I guess this is the guy that's not going to ask questions, but maybe they have other qualities, and and they really did not get to know the deeper me, and I didn't reveal it because I'm like, if they don't ask, I'm not going to tell them. So it was okay, a- but do you remember what I was telling you in my in my wild coaching skills in the kitchen? Yes, what that you do have to kind of snowplow in there with conversation, because just I, you're. A wonderful, beautiful human being that asks lots of questions. You are the eternal interviewer. But in normal speak, if you sit back and watch, people will tell a story. One time I saw a bear. Oh, really? I had a bear story too. And then they tell their story. And then you get to know each other. So not everyone's just going to interview and ask questions. But I think I choose guys who will talk about the bear for an hour and then move on to another subject about themselves. But you need to interject that bear story. Well, if but what I need to do is not choose guys who don't stop and go... What about you? Or who don't stop talking? Yeah. That's a, I think we, you know, I hate to say it, but respect maybe had an ear humper father that it's just become. <laughs> he didn't familiar. really hump our ears. That sounded weird. Ear humper oh, okay. just means a talker. Talk, 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 when, talk, talk. When talk baggy- to anyone about the same story, whether it's personal or not. It could be a guy on a bus bench or 
a coworker or us. He and won't remember that he maybe told you that, but it, we'll talk about things for, I mean, we used to put down the phone and two hours later, pick it up and he'd still be talking. So that kind of, yeah. Do you remember that? He Was would it clear two hours. Out, it wasn't well. Two the answer, hours. the length of our answering machine tapes back in the days when it was tapes. <laughs> that is Do you remember? True. It would just go run the whole tape. Yeah, and then he, be like, he went through some some rough times. So why do you not have an issue with this, and why do I? That's a good question. Maybe you're nicer than I am. I I bust in there with my stories too. I don't know. Really, and you've always been like that. But you've also chosen guys who ask you questions. Have I? I guess, yeah. I don't know. I don't like the the showboats. You kind of like the the star on stage kind of guys. Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay, no. this is a new chapter. Yes. So these guys are go. exhausting, and they will no longer get my attention. The first sign of self absorption. The first time you turn that spotlight on yourself, sir, you are out the back door. <laughs> Whoa! A weird, huge butterfly just flew in front of my window. That's a sign, <gasps> Joe. It's dad. It was yellow Sorry, and black. Dad. We summoned him by talking bad. I'm so sorry. I feel <laughs> guilty now. He's or it's a just a butterfly thing. trying to get out of the heat. It's so hot today. But you weren't bothered by Dad's incessant talking. Well, no, of course I was. But remember my motto? Hmm. Remember what I told you when you were just like so fed up with Dad? What? Pretend he's, he's dying of pretend cancer. He's you dying. caused it, Joel. He did up! die of cancer. Stop it! You Don't manifested say it. that. That's awful. You're I awful. did not. Oh. <laughs> You're, are you firing me as your love coach? Stop <laughs> it right kidding. now. I no. love you. But it was, it, my, have... it was another way of saying have tolerance because they're not going to be here forever and just have grace. Take, but that was breaths. when we were like 25. How could you have tolerance back there knowing no. that? No. That was in high school when we were living together at okay. Creek Court. Yeah. That was very profound of you. Do you know that my sister and I went to a world famous guru? You're not talking to me anymore. You're talking to our audience. Who? Am I supposed to be talking to you? <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. Hi, audience. Yes, let's involve our audience. In fact, can I do a very quick shout out? Wait, pin- I was in the middle a- of a story. I know, I know. Put a pin in the guru. I want to say, by the way, I put this on my little sheet. I do have a sheet. Um, where's episode 131? We had a question because we go from 130 to 132 if you go to massweens.com. It is on Patreon. Because it had some personal information that my son decided he did not want out there in the big world. So you have to go to Patreon and sign up for $5 a month if you want to get episode 131. Cup of coffee. Just like Sarah and Jody and Megan and Carla and Joyce. So thank you, patrons. Okay, that's it. All right. So, Dad, we went to a guru and... And he said to... This is Ram Dass' partner, Dale Borglum... Ram Dass, Stephen Levine, and and uh, Dale started the Living Dying Project together to work with people who are transitioning to be more conscious dying. It was in the 60s. Anyway, Ram Dass got huge and famous. Stephen Levine died. Dale Borglum, he says Shh. this. What? Okay. I'm going to pull up a picture of Ram Dass and show the, the camera. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, Ram Dass uh, was... Instrumental in the movement with Tim Leary. He was a Harvard professor. They got fired for doing LSD uh, therapy and trials. Oh, so you were trying to Ram Dass me with that Molly suggestion earlier. Okay, go ahead. I was Ram Dassing you. uh, But the the Molly therapy, not to digress, but to digress, they said it's equal to 20 years of marriage counseling in one MDMA session. And they outlawed it. It's hugely amazing because you finally get out of your own head and you get connected to your love center and you're able to talk openly about problems. You mm. remember it the next day. It's not like you're in some fruity land. Who supported the study, the MDMA producers? No, it's oh. known to be hugely effective and they're trying to bring it back. That and psilocybin. All right. There's Ram Dass, everybody. Yeah. Guru. He recently died. Bald and bearded, ago. and then, yeah, his buddy Dale is who we talked to. And Dale said, to get back to that topic, yes, that he looked at Joel, and Joel said something to him. We interviewed him for a documentary project about death and dying, and um, he looked at Joel, and Joel said something like, oh, you know, my sister, she's more spiritual. I'm just here. I'm the scientist. And he goes, Joel, you are 
much more grounded. Your sister and I are the neurotic ones. We're the ones that have to show up all the time and try to go to therapy and do meditation, which is essentially true. I think that, you are, I know that kind of threw me. I was like, huh. But you guys I feel that way. have all I'm the like, answers. It you're seems the, like you're pretty grounded. You don't really have huge depression. You're you know what that's called? What? Basic. I'm yeah, but just boop. Why <laughs> going through life? That's not true though. You're wise and you're deep. And I mean, do you really think that you don't think about deeper stuff? Like, why are we here on the world? And what is the meaning? Well, you of think life? it's a waste of time to think about stuff like that, right? You're more like to do list. Yeah. Yeah. But you're happy. Yeah. Okay. So you got something figured out. <laughs> and I know it. And I just clap my hands. Yay! Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. It, it is the basics for me. But then again, I, I followed the little, you know, Americana routine. I got married. I have kids and live in the burbs and whatever. Life, Life is, is good. good. I but knew you were going to say that. I'm sorry. I know. So basic, so predictable. I'm working on it. I'm going to, maybe I should do some, some psychosolibin or what is the other Psilocybin one? mushrooms. Yeah. They're yeah. doing psilocybin clinical trials and it's beating depression. It's helping with alcoholism, drug addiction. Huge. They're going to, they're trying to get a law passed in where they do therapy with that. Wow. This is exciting. So Johns Hopkins University is doing all these studies. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I keep seeing it in the news, but I haven't read much about it. Um, so if you want to see in. a good show on it, sorry, but I'll just mm -hmm. say that um, Michael Pollan did a book all on this and on Netflix right now. It's called How to Change Your Mind. Okay. I'm writing it down. Watch Michael. it on Netflix. They have ones on LSD, MDMA, psilocybin, ayahuasca. Oh, no, they didn't do that. They did mescaline. But it is interesting. Hmm. Interesting. And to dig deeper, it's not a... It's not a surefire way of solving all your problems, but it might be a way to get some insight where you're seeing the world through your limited lens. And then, but they're right. saying with guided, you know, clinicians, not yeah. by yourself with your buddies. Right. Right. So, yeah, anyway. we talked about ayahuasca somewhere in one of our episodes. And, and then our buddy and his wife, they were talking about going to do a retreat where they do that. And should we say names? Because oh. maybe they don't want people to know about that. True. That's true. We'll, we'll bleep we'll it out. Bleep it. We'll cut it out. That'll be a fart. Um, speaking of old friends, can I talk about this really quick? Will you please come yes, to- Yes, but I didn't feel my- I oh, didn't finish my deal breaker ahead. list. Oh, gosh. We're jumping ahead. I'm so sorry. Yes. I mean, By do the way, you want to finish it? No, but have you done any of those things or you're not going to talk about that, huh? The drugs? Mm-hmm. Yeah. MDMA I did with- <laughs> Um, Are you going to say names? <laughs> no. <laughs> Loop. <laughs> and uh, mushrooms I did with... I'm sure he wouldn't care. Loop. And that was a really profound thing that I got out of that is how definite nonverbal communication is between two people. It was a huge insight. And I just heard yesterday in one of my classes... 85% of communication is done non-verbally between humans. Wow. So I was like, much. verification. Yeah. yeah. It so is that was true. Interesting. Vibes are everything, man. And body language. Yeah. And you become symbiotic with your husband. At some yes. point, you're, do you feel that already? Yeah. I mean, just in the weird, you know, ESP, we call each other or say the same thing or, yeah, definitely. In so you're kind of... Mm -hmm. You actually <clears throat> are sharing, I don't know what they said, molecules or not yeah. hormones, but We're like anyway. the roots of trees. We're all talking to yeah. each other. We just That's can't it. see it. That's it. Like and it. you get oxytocin bonding with people. Anyway. Right. Okay. So let me just go through this list okay, real fast. Okay. okay. Deal right. breakers immediately. Don't waste time. He doesn't ask questions or show genuine interest in getting to know the deeper me. Mm -hmm. Two, he's unavailable physical or emotionally. Three, he's mean and shows sign of disrespect. Ooh. He's dorky and has eye, he has dorky <laughs> eye rolling humor. He's intolerant, much like me and my dorky eye. That one could be nuanced. If he's a great guy, I wouldn't care about that. He goes through really? the motions, but is detached. So he like uh. shows up and pretends to be a good boyfriend person, but secretly is not all there, you know? Yeah. What if he's on his phone all the time? 
Like, yeah, yeah. Also honey. terrible. Right. Yeah, wouldn't do it. He doesn't respect himself or others. He lets himself go. Fat, health, self-care, hygiene. Replies. He relies Ooh. on parents for or others for money. Yes. Would you do the thing like uh, you, you can't gain more than 20 pounds or I'm out of here? That's pretty terrible. But <laughs> did someone he, do that? Well, people have, have claimed that, you know, of course, it's the extreme. But like, this is my reason for divorce. Like in court and everything, she signed a contract. She wouldn't gain more weight. And this is not what I married. This is not who I married. And I want out. Hence my first thing is that he respects and loves me for the deeper person. But yeah. I also wouldn't want to be. So you don't have to sign overweight. the contract, but he does. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I mean. No, I get it. I get it. Just you be get healthy. It. If someone's yeah. letting himself go that much, that means there's something else going on. Right. right. Or they need to get new medication. Right. Because it's there. I almost said thalidomide. What's the part of them? Uh, Thyroid. Thyroid. Okay. He relies on parents or others for money. He doesn't like his family with no great reason. His living space is dirty or smelly. He has He's infantile in humor, behavior, or spirit. He doesn't love animals. He's brash or harsh. He's not emotionally, spiritually. Oh, not smart. Emotionally, spiritually. Brain. He's shady. He lies to benefit himself. Financially mm. irresponsible. He sucks as a human being. I would feel weird. If I would feel weird bringing him around my family or friends. Like making excuses for him. Yeah. If he doesn't have my back, if he's not equal in the relationship effort, like driving, going to my stuff, supporting me, and SEX. Sorry, mom. He doesn't like <laughs> kids or adults or older adults. <laughs> Done. Yeah. I like it. What do it. you think? That's a great list. Is it too much? I mean, it's a long list. This guy better be out there. Perfect and wonderful. But well, I will say, okay. as a seasoned married person, you do have to let a few things go. I will, but I'll find how to do those things for myself where that guy doesn't have to do them. You know what I mean? No. Okay. This is what I was just talking to someone on the phone about. If you fill that up in yourself, then you'll let go on a few things. You know what I mean? Like you might, or if he's amazing, you pick your five and you let a couple of those go. Pick your top five. Yeah. And then what? So, so you mean I'll, like- I'll if, work on that. If you find out he's a little too money motivated, then you will donate extra to balance out that. Not that one. No. But okay, for example, <laughs> the one that you just gave me, if I figure out how to speak up more and interject my own self, maybe mm -hmm. I wouldn't need him to ask me so many questions. Ah, yes. Right. So maybe I'll figure out how to balance that myself. Right. Because it all comes down to balance. You. And Jesus. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Yeah, now what if you find someone who marks all the boxes but is like a is a born again Christian that's Can't just Can't imagine it would work. It could not work. That's too fundamentally different. Yeah. Don't you I think? Mean, it's a big big thing. It has ruined lots of marriages where people thought we can make this work. I'm this, you're that. Okay, your husband middle. is 100% atheist. I would say you're more agnostic. You let a little of the sun, sunlight of the spirit in, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, uh, I believe in all the gurus that all these people existed, the Buddhas and the Jesuses and the all the good guys and taught good lessons. Um, well, he might believe in that too because they actually did exist, right? I mean, they're he, yeah, but, but he doesn't the, believe that there's Sorry. a God. He's spiritual to a degree, but then he's very scientific too. So. So he's not full on atheist, hundred percent. Like everything else, isn't true. I'd say agnostic. Really? I think, okay. I think because that lines up with who you are. I think, right? Yeah, I think we really do see eye to eye, and more so the older we get, and the kids are out of that age where, in the beginning, I was like, well, it might be nice to go find a community at a church and do, you know, the Sunday school and it's the peer group and the youth groups and just for that. But then he really did kind of explain and show all the different ways that kids can get kind of up. backdoor indoctrinated into a certain thought process. And yeah, and I did remember a lot of that growing up of going to, to youth camp. And yes, it was fun. But then there were also moments when I was looking around and everybody was raising their hand and like, oh, Jesus, the spirit. And I was like, I guess I'm supposed to do that too. And I'd be like, Ah, uh, I did, <laughs> did not you? know. I didn't feel any spirit. I was just like worried about 
did I put deodorant on? It was so awkward. And then if Mark Hoover was looking at me with his little teeth and wanted to go on a hike Joel and kiss L. me again, it was just, I, I was not moved by the spirit. I was moved by be a good person. Do well, take care of others. And so that's what I live by. It's the golden rule stuff. Shabam. And, that's you know? at the foundation of all religions. Hello? If people just follow that, it might yes. be a better place. Yes. All about love. Done. Just like uh, Michelle said in our last episode. I hope everybody yes. liked our pride episode with Steph and Michelle. Yay. They, they're the best. But it was great. Yeah. Open-mindedness. Everything comes from love. And if you can operate from that place, then we're all good. It's the judgment and... Ugh, all that. But, yeah. But it I'm would be tough. You're right. Because even atheists say, my way is smarter and better than all you guys. And I think that's intolerance. It's yeah. even if you believe that you're better than, I mean, I don't know. Maybe don't yeah. say it. Maybe don't show, have some tolerance for others. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, um, yeah, I have friends who are Christian and I think. We just kind of choose to not discuss certain topics because we know we're never going to change our minds and we still love each other and we talk about the good stuff and we can have discussions and kind of say each of our points and why and then move on and it's not yeah. a big blowout. So that's great. I'm just glad that those are my friends because anyone that had the judgment around it would not be. I'm too old to deal with any of that. Let me get my good. glasses again. Good. No, no slumps, no chumps, and no, no Bible thumps. Yeah, that's right. it, Joe. <laughs> Good. I like it. Thanks. You sounded like Dirty Harry. <laughs> okay, so what else do so, you want to close out the dating part of life here, and then we can move on? Yeah, yeah. What? Okay, so next step. So now that we have our list, you have me in place, ready to be your manager. Okay. I would like to find some singles events to accompany you to. I'll be your wingman, or I have some single friends. I can wing woman make you right, right, right. Wing woman, I can make you uh, you guys introductions, and everybody can we and go out together. Ooh! So we like the in person thing, but we also like the dating apps. So where are you with Who's that we? idea? You and me, we're a team. Oh well, I didn't say I like the dating apps. Oh well, that's why I'm asking. What do you oh, want okay. to do next? Well, I would like to maybe do the dating apps, but it would have to be probably not those free ones. We'll take away all the frees because if someone doesn't put money into it, then they're bottom of the barrel. Yeah. That's my guess. This costs something. That's I just it. pointed down. <laughs> Whoa, Joe. <laughs> I hope you're talking about your knees. Yeah. I've got my some knees. good ones. Oh, <laughs> got to invest strong. in these knees. That's it. Yeah, um, so maybe yeah. like we'll find a couple that are good, solid ones, and then I gotta, I'm putting putting them through a couple things. I mean, these guys really have to measure up to something. They're gonna have to wait a little bit. I'm gonna go through several dates before good. there's any heavy petting or <laughs> kissing. We're gonna go through stages. I got a dating plan. Wow, going into effect. Now you're not gonna divulge this, right? This is all quiet no. behind the scenes stuff. This is you and me. We'll discuss. Yes. But they don't know yeah, anything about this. They're not going to find this podcast or listen to this episode, right? <laughs> no. I'm not going to tell them my last name for several <laughs> dates. Yeah. So they can't find any of this stuff. Wait until yeah, they so love you. There's going to be a heavy vetting process. Heavy Just vetting. To... No heavy petting. <laughs> no. <laughs> Look at you. She's put on those glasses again. <laughs> okay. What do you think well, about that? Okay, good. I like it. Um, she wants to say soften her edges. No, I had a point and I was just thinking of something. Um, so you're not going to get physically involved. We have stages and bases that we're going to hit. Yes. Um, how many... Okay, so let's say we do an online uh, thing that's paid. How many times do you have to talk back and forth before you agree to meet? And where would you like to meet? And what would the, these dates look like? Well, that's the part we have to figure out. Maybe we'll discuss that next time we're in town because, um, I mean, next my we're girlfriend. In town. I don't know. I just, but <laughs> we live upstairs and downstairs. All right. Upstairs and downstairs. Wee Willy Winky runs through the town. Upstairs <laughs> and downstairs you the episode, in his nightgown. Singing that song. Rapping at the windows, crying at the locks. Are the children in no beds for now? It's eight o'clock. 
Okay, does anyone know Wee Willy <laughs> Winky? Please write in. He's hot. Long he's stocking got a wee cap. Running Willy, he's town. running around, creeping in people's windows. We don't probably know what, no underwear under that. No night, underwear. Nightgown. He's got or a nightgown night and a cap. <laughs> this is creepy. With a candle. <laughs> Start a fire. Rapping at the windows. Oh. Anyway, this is what we grew up on. I love it. So my friend in New York was online dating and she would like immediately want to do a FaceTime meeting and kind of, yes. she said it was like a business interview and would ask her basic questions. And if they passed that, then she would go for a coffee if they passed that. And it was always limited time, like one hour. That's she good. was all business and didn't want to waste time because nice. all this back and forth and this nuance. And then you might meet them and or see them in FaceTime and, you know, they're not like their picture. And or- this was one of the hot tips from Jules Hannaford. Remember our episode when we interviewed her, how not to get catfished and dragged into something. You need to see this person in real time talking on a video too. Okay. You want to make sure they're the real person. And, but also, didn't she say she talked to him on video and he did seem legitimate and it was only until she met with him in person? Yeah, that guy really duped her. But it's rare that that happened. This is, for those of you who don't know, this was a, a fellow podcaster who wrote a book and made a podcast about her story of getting financially catfished and giving this creep, this thief, all this money and and her life was really in danger. It's a really good story episode. Mm-hmm. It's called um, uh, Fool Me Twice. Yeah. Don't fool me twice. No, fool me twice. Fool me yeah. twice. She also yeah. has a new episode about diamonds. It's a whole new series. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Her series so, has gone. It's like huge too, by the way. Yeah. So it's really big. Yeah. yeah it's, she's, she's doing a success story. We love Jules. Yay. We love you, Jules. So I'm going to um, take a note from Jules's book, and we'll see the guy on FaceTime, but also yeah. meet him, make sure he's real. And people get catfish a lot, by the way. It happens. So any – and they'll, they'll spend money at first. Remember what's the stupid documentary we watched about that guy? Dirty the John? Tinder Swindler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Tinder Swindler. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait. Yeah. What was the story? Now I can't remember. So he would take money from, he was like, made himself out to be this baller and would use one woman's money to fly her jet plane and go pick up another woman. And then eventually, he was like the long, long haul guy who six months in would ask for $40,000 and then maybe... And he looked like he had a lot of money, so people would... And he was like, people are after me, and you got to help me. And he would send the same bloody video, like, look, they're after me. I just got punched. So he Punched. Punched. Okay. (laughs) That's That's Amber Heard. I did not punch you. You did not get punched. (laughs) Oh, she's awful. Aquaman. (laughs) Aquaman. (laughs) (laughs) Ha-ha. Does anyone know what we're talking about? so much fun with those sound bites. Oh, Oh, my God. Poor so Johnny great. Depp. We were Johnny on the Depp. Depp side. She was a terrible lady. Yeah. See, he was being led around by his dinky with that one. Well, That's- also, they were both clearly, and I mean, it's just like a classic toxic relationship, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you yeah. saw all that, Joe, did you relate to any of it? Like, ooh, I've done that. Ooh, I did that. Um, We talked about this a little. I can't remember. I did relate to something, which was... I don't remember. Hmm. Okay. Well, no. I think it was just getting in a heated argument, and but never taking it that far, of course. But just those feelings of seeing red and just being so mad and frustrated. But then you add all his alcohol and drugs on top of it, and then her craziness. And oh, those tapes just reminded me of our past. Well, it'll come out in the documentary, perhaps. What? About the I'm speaking in code about oh yeah it's crazy yeah love addiction yes 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 all right Which, but moving okay. on stay positive I want to start as soon as possible are you game because you are busy tell our friends and listeners I have started my master's program I'm doing Woo! a master's in social work and I started my internship first week is over Hitting the second week, Monday. So Monday through Friday, it's a lot of stuff going on and lots of papers and reading coming up. So it's a whole new world. 
a and whole it's new crazy. world. You it's are super busy. It's going to be a 60-hour work week for you, going to classes, doing your internship. So tell uh, – do you want to talk about where you're working? Where yeah, is your San cubicle? San Diego County Aging and Independence. So it helps hook older people who might need resources up with the resources. So Very nice. And that's all, all – I won't get too into it because I've only been there a week and I'm not sure all this stuff. But it's a great resource for people who might need caregiving or – assessment for Alzheimer's and dementia and yeah. help with anything. Yeah. There's so much out there people don't know about. We and there's were money about- out there. And the yeah. whole idea is to get the get the word out that, hey, guys. Right. You know. Right. The success. Yeah. We, we have elder help. We both did that a while ago. Meals on Wheels we've both done. And then um, the Jewish Family Services. And they're all yeah. kind of pseudo interrelated. Yeah, and they are. Good county money state money yeah. and independent money but yeah it's all good stuff for there's a lot of shut-ins out there and a lot of older folks what, doesn't that do you have a soft spark soft <laughs> smart for the old Sorry. i have soft farts and soft spurts she yes. does folks she does that was a lot of s's i'm gonna have to edit out so anyway we'll just say yeah. that there's that we both have a soft spot for the older adults yes we right. don't say elderly we don't say seniors by the way older adults older adults okay yep I and then that. Uh, that was new terminology. I the learned. golden years, <laughs> the best generation. No golden years. What older the, folks. The, does older folks work? No. Sure. No. Yeah. Okay. Black folks. <laughs> older folks. I don't know. <laughs> okay, anyway, good. so that's something. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm where so it goes. proud of you, Julian. I just have to say, I know I'm not supposed to like. That's a codependent thing to say. I'm proud of you. Why? Because then you feel like you have to live up to something that I'm putting no, out there. No, I'm not going to live Aren't up to Aren't you proud shit. of yourself? Yes. <laughs> I love it. But yeah. that's awesome. You did it. You had straight A's and now you're getting a master's degree. All well, we'll because see. of COVID. All because of a bat All because of COVID. In a and wet market. stopped the crazy film industry for a little bit enough to slow the F down. So yeah. thank you, world. Sorry about the circumstances, but I was very grateful. Thank you, Joe, for saying that. I yeah, appreciate you very much. And thank you for having me here. How do you think that's going, by the way? Because I'm at your house I love for it. a temporary amount of time. But what do you think so far? I love Let's it. Let's talk real. Talk real. Okay. I love having you here. Uh, you know my my things I don't love. Flies. Flies. Cat Open food. containers. Open and containers. <laughs> <laughs> and dirty counters when you slosh stuff on the counters and don't wipe I it. I don't up. slush. Eh, there's a few green blops here and there. Green smoothies. Green sorry. smoothies. She makes us green smoothies every morning, folks. I can't get mad at that. So you can't because that's it. Do you like those green smoothies? I love the green smoothies. Although, woo, and it gives Yesterday. me an extra sit down in the morning. And sometimes <laughs> I'm out walking the dog and I have to really walk fast home because <laughs> it gets me moving, if you know what I mean. It's good. There's but, a lot of good stuff in there. Yeah, you yeah. you're great. No, I love it. I think Aww. everything is good and I love Are you going to be here. I love you too and I love being here and you guys are wonderful. And I hope your husband feels the same way too cuz he's yes. part of it. Does he get yep. annoyed at anything? Nope. Now you, have you to speak for him. He doesn't. No, and you know that. And I you okay. keep making me check in with him and I keep checking in with him and I keep reporting back that's, that That's codependent. Sorry. <laughs> it is <laughs> though, folks. Really? Yeah. Why? I'll get over it. Because you're asking for someone to validate you or give you approval. It's like, um, it, I told you if you guys have a problem, just tell me. That's oh. as far as it should go. Yeah. Well, that's fine. It's like a, fill out a, a satisfaction card. Like, mm-hmm. fill out a survey. How how yeah. happy are you these days? So that's it. We're just checking in, taking the temperature. How yeah. are you feeling, though? What bothers you about our house? There's got to be a lot. No, Stinky nothing. dogs. Uh, your dog's ears smell like cheese. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> uh, the stinky blue cheese type. Yeah, he's got an ear infection and he gets them all year long, all summer long when he swims. It's yeast. Oh, he's poor yeasty. guy. We tried yeasty, though, yeasty. right? We tried the apple cider vinegar, which is supposed to cure everything. Yeah, Didn't cure I that. need to take him to the vet and get more actual medicine again. We tried okay. the homeopathic way. Did not work. Next, are you going to be resentful that I'm going to be spending a lot of time in my own world, no, not helping as much. No. Okay. Because you didn't help a lot before. No, I'm kidding. You did. Of course you did. I'm kidding. No, the boys are so independent now. You okay. were helping me drive them well, Maybe before. I wasn't helping. Yeah. You were. You were. I'm kidding. It was a joke. Yeah. The boys are You know now- what? You can suck it. 
I am sick of all. I'm just kidding. I don't like when you act mad because you're actually an actress and it really worries me. You really do look mad. Uh, Toby drives now, so he takes his brother back and forth. So those two are off the slate. I just have to pick up Elliot at home. Uh, I mean, after football at night. Charlotte, Mm -hmm. I love driving around. I think it's fun and cute. So I'm happy to do that. I love driving my kids around. This is it. I quit the garden. I don't work there anymore. Thank goodness. I am retired and handed on the baton to another elementary school pair of moms. Yay. And that was my goal was to make it a paid position. Make it a paid position and... (laughs) <laughs> Joel, why would you do that to yourself? She just pooped herself. <laughs> she just green smoothied out the back of her ergonomically Joel. correct chair. Gee whiz, that poor plant. Watch everybody, it's starting to wilt. Look at it. Just kidding. <laughs> she just lowered her chair. She's like only a head in there. All right. It's almost like I can smell it. Gross. All right. Anyway. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying. So All right. I've handed on the baton, so now I'm available to drive and I'm available to be a mom because this you, is the so last you like that. year. You, I asked you, what is the most important thing in your life? And you said being a mom. Yeah, it's totally. I mean, one of them, we'll say. Yeah, no, it really is. It's it's the number one thing that keeps me up at night that I wake up like, okay, here I go on my day. What, you know, it's Do you top think of mind have- all the time. Is, has your anxiety gone away in the middle of the well, night? Right. All right. No. I, I knew you were going to go here. analyzing you. <sighs> this is my anyway, new job. can I just say I'm available because Toby is a senior. He's starting to look into colleges right now. We're starting the application process. We have hired a lady to help him go through all his stuff, um, get him on track, pick careers, and oh, it's a lot. Poor guy. I feel bad. I'll bet he's but feeling he's gonna, it's the pressure. It's so nice to have direction and guidance and help along the way. So yeah, you guys I are hope. really wonderful parents. I was telling someone that the Aww. other day how involved you are in Thanks. their lives and you actually care about them and their – To a degree, but then sometimes we like when they just sit in front of that Xbox because then it's not a lot of maintenance, which That's is awful, okay. but you can get your stuff done. But then I feel guilty because then they're – playing xbox all the time this is the middle one when he's not at football but i figure with football he needs a lot of downtime i'm anxiety out right now aren't i i am doing it i do spin out a little just worrying about the kids but i feel like i only have this much time left and i have to do it right i'm a perfectionist you do put a lot of pressure on yourself yeah you are a number two on the enneagram scales which is the helper yeah Uh, you're a helper okay and your whole your worth is helping others, but you also want to hear thank yous and get appreciation for it. But yes, I, think, I do. See this back? It yep. needs to be padded. Yep. And, uh, but you also care a lot about your kids. Mom said it was her favorite job in the world is being a mom too. Yeah. My, that might be fourth on my list, but <laughs> I think well, some people the kids to are be the mom. To, yeah. Yes. Okay. I like to be the aunt. But for you, yes. it was very important that you did that and you – Take it seriously. So it makes sense that I do think you might have a little too much anxiety around it because, in my opinion, you're doing a wonderful above and beyond job. Thank you. But maybe you don't see how other people are doing it. So, yeah, it's less now. I feel like now that they're more independent, I'm kind of like, okay, cool. You're on the right track. I don't think they're going to, you know, go off and do MDMA unless they listen to this episode. Uh, Only when you're married, folks, and you're over 25. <laughs> And you need to spice up the bedroom. Um, uh, no, I think and watching Toby really mature and like working out and eating healthy and All in getting own. a job. I mean, like that's huge. That to me is just like, ah, it's you almost like about- they've flown the coop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's number one. I didn't know what this was going to look like. So he's the firstborn and he's doing great. Joe, you did it. Straight A's all as well. Second kid, straight A's. Little, he needs a little more direction, but he is only fifteen. So straight A's. So he's, he's very okay. social. He's got a different personality and loves his buddies and loves his Xbox. Bullshit. What about? Okay, uh, we won't talk about that. What? Ladies, he started to date, but you're oh, not hearing. Well, as that's much about episode. It? What did I say? One thirty-one. So One. that's on Patreon. You can go there okay. to hear that. That's um, private. Yeah. And Charlotte is great, too. And she's just starting cheer, competitive cheer. And that's her new little world. And it's very athletic. They have to be really strong and throw 
kids up in the air and stuff. She's, she's like a lot of gymnastics. Yeah, she's a spotter kind of. I'm person. making sure she doesn't go that snooty cheerleading route because I, I had know. a lot of problem with those people in high school. So I'm making sure she, I'm giving her her Nirvana guitar lessons. Good, yes. Throwing in some Radiohead in there yeah. and making sure she stays grounded in in important things like guitar. Yes. Like guitar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, she is. I think she'll always be that kind of person yeah. too. I don't think she'll ever go too extreme. Cool Even kid. if she has wacky friends, I think she'll just kind of. Straight and yeah. narrow. I hope. She's I the hope, diplomat, too. Yeah. I like so, that. Yeah, it's cute, though. She's going through all her stuff and, you know, started sixth grade, started middle school. This is a whole new world and dabbling with eyeliner and little, you know, cares that about time. her appearance a little bit more. And Weird yeah. to see, huh? Yeah. And we had to buy some female products to put under the sink just in case. It and you, I saw, now. can I just tell you what I saw the other day? Uh huh. I came out of the back room and I'm going in there and I hear this mom and Charlotte's going, God. And the two boys are on the couch and they're going, geez. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. And they're like, no, I just want to tell you that you put this in your underwear and you put these little flaps around so they <laughs> stick on. And I'm like, what is she training her kid? And I see that you're telling him how to put it in a pad. But you're <laughs> yes. right in front of the two boys. Charlotte already took off down the hall. <laughs> so what was happening? Well, okay. So we had our perimenopause episode. And as we know, we're both slowing down in life, which is perfectly fine with okay, me. Okay. I also, can I say Brian Lee, my good buddy Brian Lee, yeah. who supported our show, he wrote me the other day. He's like, I just listened to 55 minutes of your perimenopause. And he's a lovely... <laughs> man friend of mine he's like i don't know why i listened to the whole thing but just so you know i know what's going on now oh and then uh, sam leaf my good friend just she listens to all of our episodes so shout out to my two buddies who are listening to all of them brian thank you yeah and sam just asked me to go to the high school reunion by the way (gasps) yay yes let's go it could be fun please go we're gonna talk about that sam i love you i just hated high school but we'll talk about it but okay these are the the okay people maybe Maybe Sam's amazing. I love her. She was, but um, anyway, keep going with your story. Oh, okay. So perimenopause. So I'm slowing down in the in the monthly department. You are, uh, and but it's like a little. I, I was telling my friends, it's like a little air fart. It's just a little like <laughs> couple days of spotting, and it's so stupid. And it's like I, I could still make a baby, but I, I can't. I but can't. Then you had four days the other day. But then, right, so this is when it started, was when you walked out and saw me, I was getting a pad. It's not like I was demonstrating and my pants were down in the living room or anything like that. I just (laughs) held it up and I said, I think you guys need to see this. And this is how you take the tabs off. And you were, if you were to put it in underwear, go like this. It's like a sticker and you wrap the wings around so it doesn't, you know, uh, bleed. Menstrual pad, guys. Yeah. Yeah. So... It has wings. And the boys, I'm like, you know what? You need to know this too because you might have a girlfriend or, you know, a wife or a sister. You might have to help Charlotte. I don't know. Like, boys need to know this too. There's nothing worse than meeting a guy who doesn't know the difference between a pad and a tampon. I'm like, come on. We're, we're, are we more than, are women more than half the species? Are there more Probably. women I mean, than men? They're more than the good half. <laughs> so, how do we like, not know this yet, people. So anyway, I wanted yes. to educate, therefore I did. I love that you talk about all this stuff. This is what our dad did with us. So a positive, yeah. wonderful shout out for our dad teaching us all this stuff and uh, yeah, trying like to counterbalance the, <laughs> the answering machine message comment. Yes. Oh, well, that's okay. I feel bad. I'm always talking about the bad stuff, but you remember the bad stuff sometimes more than the good. And, well, or for facts. me, it happened. Yeah, he was he negative was a talker. Bias. Mm. The one, that one negative comment can outweigh the hundred positive comments. It's yeah. a very strong thing in our brains. That's primal. True, true. true. Helps us with yeah. survival. Okay. Fact. And Sorry, how dare on. somebody just talk into a machine for an hour? Dad, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> I know. No, we're having See, we a love real it conversation. Too. I know. And we had I'm all sure. our tapes. He was the original podcaster, by the way. We yes. we need to digitize all his tapes and videos because he made us this yes. way, 
and uh, he made us always write, interviewing and so us. all the good things you have to say three positive comments when you say one negative comment about someone it outweigh it so okay. he was a great archiver he cared yes. so much about us that he would record us as little kids so someday we could hear ourselves as adults yep. and and that has been true and so precious yep. and he taught us about periods um, <laughs> and female anatomy on a bionic woman who was invisible you could see inside of her right no no it was a solid uh barbie but she was just huge so he drew oh. with a pencil oh. where her uterus was and fallopian tubes and ovaries and yeah see i don't know why but i thought i had a memory of him showing me with a banana and melon and i, might I know be wrong. why do you say that, that did i make so that upsetting. up i don't know maybe i got a different I talk know. I think I'm the not. second kid gets it because they have just had it. They put too much effort in the first kid. And the second one just gets a banana and a in a cantaloupe. <laughs> I mean, and they move very on. Possible. We always had fruit on the on the counter. He was a health nut too, so he probably I mean, was uh, busy. They were like, "She's fine. She'll land on her feet." <laughs> he probably had the it. the sperm were the raisins and the yeah. the eggs were the almonds, and there yes. was a banana and a. Melon so and- now when I order fruit salad, it's a whole different experience. It's very <laughs> Always odd. dried apricots. Those yeah. are probably the- uh, My fallopian tubes. Yeah, and the ovaries. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, Dad. Okay. We're winning fruit salad forever. And one yeah, more good no. thing about Dad, go Joe. He's a fun, funny person, and we had so much fun with him. And we are starting to run out of time, I think, right? Are we at time? Let's, let's end this sucker. All right, all right. It's been a fun sucker, but I have lots to talk about in our next one. Uh, I went to London. We'll do a little London recap. Yeah, on the hottest stories. day of London's history, by yes, the way. Yes, yes. All right, don't don't ruin the, my lead story. I'll, okay, I'll tell but it you next have to time. Entice. Okay, it's enticing. Hear what happened on the hottest day in London's history. I was there. Um, other fun things. Oh, I have a lot of fun articles that were in the news that I want to discuss. Oh, there she goes again. As soon as I start talking, you tune out. You like? No, I'm not. You're not. I was getting okay. closer to the mic. Okay, she just turned into a small, small person in her screen. Um, and my tooth debacle. Um, what else? Jaws. Jaws. Boobs. We were gonna talk about that. That'll come up next time. What are, What's wrong with your boobs? Uh, we'll talk about it next time. Are you going to get him chopped off? Enticing. I don't know. <gasps> Let's talk about it next time. I'd like to talk about my boobs, too. Okay. I'm starting to look like a lady in National Geographic that's nursing a pig. We'll talk <laughs> about that it. next time. <laughs> I always remember that picture traumatized me. <laughs> it's not funny. They need resources there. Oh, Stop my laughing. God. Wow. Wow. Well. True. You know, maybe there's a market for that. But anyway, okay. Boys and girls, thank you for listening. Thank you, patrons. We appreciate your your being there and helping keep the lights on over here. And uh, everyone who listens. And I'm hey. sorry it's been so long. It's just been kind of a summer break for us. We took a little bit of a... She's self so we're getting We're getting back to our weekly catch-ups and, and hopefully... She's been touching her boobs. Stop (laughs) it. Stop. With piglets attached. All right. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you. All right. Let's play it back. Summertime. And the movie. The fish are jumping, and the cotton is dry. Your daddy itch, and your mama's good sleeping. So hush, Did you know we were tape recording it? Huh? <laughs> Is it time for mouse and greenie? Fish are jumping. Mouse is high. The wind is red. So Good looking, yeah. Mouse, oh, little
love and what would be your intro song all this and more on today's brilliant observations do 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 okay how cute is that introduction and that song that belongs to brilliant observations podcast that was melissa talking in comes amy here they are like our cool doppelgangos on the east coast and they're moms and they're fun and they're funny and it's chat and conversational and they're our friends check it out brilliant observations care tov it just means good morning sounds like pimp your ride it just means good morning pimp your ride (laughs) (laughs) boke tov this is a vast a podcast in which i paul chomo talk about the golden age of piracy and answer questions like How did pirates actually talk? Is that pirate video game any good? What even is a poop deck? Do pirate TV shows and movies get anything right? Spoiler alert, not really, but the truth is far more interesting. The Avast podcast is about pirate history, pop culture, trivia, comedy, and maybe even a little sprinkling of true crime once in a while. Subscribe to Avast wherever you get podcasts, and remember, you have the buckles, darn it. Don't be afraid to swash them. This was a podcast of the Podfix Network. You can check out more shows like it at podfixnetwork.com.